Much everything that I can show you, I have. we can all the other stuff like the service data manual, and the overview to the black diagram if we wanted to, disassembly inspection that can all be done when we I show you how to disassemble and do basic maintenance. That's just the easiest way to do that. Um, stylus, that's him. Uh, I can do the I'll do the shipping and uh, show you the simple toolkit to get that out of the way, and then you can do the stylus if you want. One thing we might want to do, um, you had a technical drawing up there, rather than to explain the complete uh, way the machine works, I could point out those areas where we get uh, requests for parts, and that would okay. help people out. Yeah. Um, uh, I, we don't need to do it now, but okay. if you want to do it later, yeah. we'll do that. Yeah. I'll uh, throw up the toolkit real fast. Start taking out parts so you can see it. I actually brought these too if anyone wants to uh, end up servicing their players. This is for the JK players. It's a pocket ruler. You got you guys got one, right? Yeah, I got one from the last year. It's it helps you do the 15, 16, 30, 30 seconds, however you wanna. Thanks. Cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you, sir. They're not the easiest, but I mean Home Depot and Nards and all them have them, but I'll be running. No, I don't. You don't want one? No. All right. He's got my player. Okay. <laughs> you get one. You can you have one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's this one on. So pretty much exactly. You want one? You want this one? <laughs> That's okay. Well, I think I'll take one. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yep. They're just uh, that's the. I don't even think that's on there. Yeah, it's not on there. It was just a good one to have. You could use the ruler, but again, it gives you that edge to where you can go. Oh, yep, that's right on. <laughs> I just brought it so they thought it wasn't working. Oh, cool. I have them already. I just went and bought these just to show you. It's number one, number two at the top. They're just standard screwdrivers, Phillips. Like it says, you want a high quality tip, at least for these, because this is for the turntable. And you can strip those screws out very fast. Yeah, you know, they're such a pain. And if you do that, you got to dremel it so that it's a flat head. Or you have to drill it all the way out and then you ruin it. You could possibly ruin the threads on the yoke. You don't want to do that. So it's basically turning into a flat head and then buy some yoke screws off him. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. A lot of people, it's, it looks weird. I'll show you when I service one. And uh, people, it, it makes you cringe a little, but when you get the screwdriver on the yoke screw, yeah, you give it a bang with like a hammer. Not too, not too hard, but it sets them in that soft aluminum, and then you can, and I mean, you really got to push down and turn hard, otherwise it will strip it. And you'll hear them, they like pop open. Like, oh, this is a screw? Uh, quarter inch socket. Easy to get. Everything is easy to get. You can go right into Menards anywhere. Get them. This is an adapter, so that I can put it on any type of drill. Whatever I have it doesn't have that. So you mentioned in here. I saw just real quickly. Posi drive screws. Which ones are posi drive versus number one and number two? It, if you buy like from Exolite or Jensen or one of those stupid overpriced guys, they actually sell a posi drive screwdriver, and it's just a slightly different angle um, than a Phillips. Um, okay. So I know. Yeah, I, I think I know what you're talking about. Uh, this, he has a screwdriver that he recommends that you basically kind of have to buy from Japan for that. Um, I got lucky and found a weird little screwdriver kit. Okay. It just it has a bit that fits perfect. Okay. And I just give it a little bump. And yeah. It's good so to go. when we look at them, I'll, I'll show you how to tell if it's a posi drive screw. But basically, you'll see it. There's actually in addition to the X, there's four little scratches, and I've never quite known what the angle difference is. But I, I actually think 
composite drive was invented by Singer, the sewing machine company. <laughs> this is a way so like only their own techs could. Yeah, yeah, that may, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like how Apple has special screws. Yeah, and stuff. yeah, yeah. Security, basically. Torque screws and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, the saw the quarter inch. You need this half inch for JK players for the turntable adjustment underneath. This is just the part to take the nut out, the entire thing out. You don't have to do that when you're really, I mean, you have to do it every time you do a basic service, but you don't need it unless you're going underneath the player. But you will. <laughs> um, electric driver, removable tips, just any screw, you know. I have a, a DeWalt, <laughs> but it has, you can set its tension type deal so that you can't over tighten something. Those, I, in my eyes, are the best because you set the way you know and you're not going to break a board or anything like that. Because um, I, I admit it, but I've seen it, I've opened one up and I'm like, oh, cool, crack board. Someone just went, wrong as hard as they could. Um, the small little ones, too, they're always good. Like the little gun like ones, they're like 20 bucks, not even, from like Walmart. Those work real good. Um, these. This, you need this one real bad. 16th, yeah. It's usually on the, the SAE ones at the very end. The 16th, they're not always there and you can go find them. They don't have them for some reason. But it's a tiny one and you can strip it out easily on that, uh, the adjusting screw underneath because it's sometimes a rusted shut. That's the case where you have to take that out, put it in like PV blaster or something, let it sit there and get it out. Otherwise, you have to get a parts player or buy it from John. <laughs> might pop it in half while you're trying to get it. Absolutely. And then you need a one eighth. Is that turntable height get out of adjustment unless you mess with it? What are you talking about? Like on a JK player? The nut underneath? Uh, let me talk about that later. Okay. And the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, whether he was whatever he was, I'd say, yep, I've seen it on move. Uh, the eighth inch, this is for the F and G players. You have to take the yoke off and then the, the, the black cap and it goes straight down, so you can adjust the height. It took me, I didn't even know that forever. I had no idea, but I've never actually had one not be on. But I have had one where the, the screw fell out. <laughs> yeah, it fell out of the bottom, and I was like, well, are you serious? <laughs> and it was gone, no idea where it went. But you could see it had that on there, it's where you could see it. It would add a little screw on top that would just inside that turntable shaft, and it raises and lowers on top of the plastic piece underneath. Oh, I didn't know it had an adjustment. Yeah, yeah, it took me forever to realize it too. I, I should have known. I went to his workshop like three times before I realized that it had that right down the center of the turntable. Oh, okay. I asked him, like, how do I adjust the turntable on the FG player? He's like, right down the center. I'm like, oh, smack my face. <laughs> <laughs> um, of course, then you have to reassemble the whole thing in order to play it just to see if it's right. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Probably somewhere. I don't know where I am, but needle nose pliers. Um, paint brushes like these are perfect because you don't want to use any duster on there. You don't want to use compressed air blowing it out. At the very worst, vacuum it or get something with an attachment that will suck stuff out and do it kind of delicate. You just don't want to be in there messing around with it. The brush usually works the best and just brush it away from everything and out. Um, normally I wait till I have the turntable out to do the brushing. I mean, I'm both style players, but you can do whatever. Uh, multimeter. Really, you won't need it for any of the basic servicing. But if, after you do the basic servicing and something isn't working still, you're going to have to start testing ICs and stuff like that, figure out what's what. So you will need it, but. Um, silicone grease. You got it. I can give you a picture or you can do It's this stuff, Bono Lube, and it's the, uh, the mod, I don't know if it's the mod number, but the 10-1223. This is for anything that's like plastic. Plastic on plastic or plastic on metal, you want to use this for. It's like the Rikon O grease. It's there. This is the best substitute you're going to find for that. This what is, is it called? Come from John. It's called Phono Lube. Okay. Pass it around, Vaughn. Okay. 
It's that. That's the number you want to look for. Okay, where are you getting that? I got that on eBay. I think you can get it on Amazon or a bunch of other places. You just got to look up Phono Loop. This is Howard. This is the bottle. If you guys want to. Yeah, yeah, the whole bottle, yeah. The used one. Is it is that specifically formulated for metal on plastic? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's meant for, yeah. I won't use any that. I, I, I use that on that, all that. I won't use anything else but that for it. It seems to work perfect and every time. Didn't pick up a lot of dirt. It's good. It's okay. good. Mm. See, uh, light synthetic machine oil. It's just sewing machine oil. Singer sewing machine oil. You only use it on a few things, but I found that this is the best thing for getting it out and putting it in stuff that you want. It's this is this was just a um, called mono jet, but it was for RC cars and gas. Uh, yeah. That's all this is for. It works great. You just pull out whatever you want and you get let you get underneath like a, there's the turntable motor. There's a little that where the uh, the belt rides on. Sorry. But right underneath there is a part you want to grease or oil, and it's so hard to get to without something like this. Very closer for the Omni Lube. Omni Lube. That was where I was Yeah, this you can get from John too. I don't know anything better than this. Do you? It's the RCA spent machine. Yeah. The only thing that I see that comes close if you're in a pinch is chainsaw bar oil. It's the only thing that's near as tacky, you know, that will stay. It's like tacky. Consistency, but that's a bit lighter grade of oil than mm -hmm. that chainsaw oil. Yeah, again, I won't use anything but this, but if you're in a pinch, yeah, it's, but I would, this, just buy from John's, but like $4 a bottle, five, I'm not exactly sure. I almost run out, it cost me $64 a gallon, that's the way I bought it. <laughs> that's it, it's an industrial lubricant. Um, JK belt remover, obviously. I use rubbing alcohol for the most part. But it's just because I don't like the smell of ammonia a lot. <laughs> yeah, he's got yeah. It works. It, the, I think the ammonia works better. I think it really does. But it's just that smell that just gets me. So I just use 91 percent rubbing alcohol. You gotta you gotta get a little you know Q-tip, some paper towel. Yeah, I let him soak for a minute. Does it? Yeah. <laughs> That's good to know. I'm throwing in some Jack. <laughs> uh, small flashlight. Obviously, I'm gonna show you that. Um, I do have it somewhere. You can use Dixon. I have a small little black or a green transparent shot glass kind of deal. That's all I use for that. Um, contact cleaner. That's saved my life a few times for sure. There's a time where you fix the entire player, you check everything, nothing's wrong, picture's still fuzzy, this, that, the other. Something's wrong. There's a, uh, the three and four switch on the back of F players. <coughs> Make sure the player's off and unplugged, but spray that in there and work it in. All of a sudden, the picture's great. You're like, are you serious? That's all this was? That's beautiful. This has saved my life a few times. Any kind of special contact? No, I, this one's Radio or Shack, or and this one's Max. CRC or any tech, yep, any brand, just as long as contact cleaner. I don't know if there's an actual. That one doesn't really say ingredients. Yeah, I, I'm just standard contact cleaner. As you mentioned before, anybody else runs out by, uh, there's a whole cooler right there. <laughs> and everything. Help yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. cool. oh, wow. I'm going to need all those flyers. FYI, photo loop, get it on eBay. It's uh, 28 bucks for a two ounce tube on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, yeah, okay. Oof. However, I was like, I'm paying like $10, $12 last time I bought it. That's what it is on eBay. Cool. But, but for some unknown reason, Get earbuds if you buy it from Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> this is an example too. I've been working on players for five years. I bought two, and I still haven't touched a second one. So. Yeah, that's my first ever tube of funnel loop, and it's still like yeah. Small, so you don't need it. No, I just bought two just so I didn't run out, or if something happened, I was like, I got another. Um. Oh, look at that. Just the difference between the two Toshiba pulleys. I'll pass them around. Um, you were saying before you were grooving those pulleys? Yes. I don't have any with me that are grooved, but it's the eighth inch groove 
right down the center so that it can accept that new belt that uh, uh, Tom <coughs> recommends to use. Okay. And it works. Mine slips off. I've never run. Maybe one. Even with the grooved one? No, I don't have a grooved one. Okay, okay. I was saying the grooved one, I've never had a problem with either the metal pulley or the grooved pulley. They're both grooved, but you're so just you mimicking that metal yeah, screw yeah, yeah. on that one. Do you sell them or do you have them? Uh, I don't. Um, Charlie Bertram from the forums, he, for like $4 in the shipping, he would do it. Okay. So your best bet is to contact him, because I don't have to wait. But he, again, he can only do the, the VP 100s and the so Montgomery Wards. If I had a stereo the uh, You the probably will need to buy the metal pulley replacement. Or you can find some, I think Tony knows someone with a lathe. Tony Fleetwood at the uh, at okay. CD Magic Forums knows someone with a lathe that fits. The 500, the 550 pulley, the 500 pulley. It's all those. Fine, but I mean, yeah, it's a uh, one of those things. You just, hope, you know, hopefully someone like Charlie or other people who can use a lathe don't go away. I don't want to buy a thirty dollar part. It makes the price go up for people and everything. You know what I mean? I think that's it for that. Um, there's a few parts that you'll end up finding out later on that they're not normal maintenance piece. You know tools, but you find them, they end up working great, and you're like, I need that. This is like a weird little dentist tool, just like that. But this, you look, this is amazing for putting F and G belts on, the servo belts, and those little, uh, the B pulley type deal, the B guides. They're, this is an amazing tool. It helps out a lot, more than you'd imagine. Even for just like reaching in somewhere and grabbing the screw you dropped. These have helped me out a lot too. And those are the ones you got from the dentist, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, I, I saw it and I was like, can I buy one of those? She's like, you can just have it. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw it, I was like, this is perfect. This is exactly, I've actually seen um, these at like Micro Center. They look almost the exact same. And they're rubber handled and grounded, you know, not magnetic, all that. So we can probably find one at Radio Shack or something like that too. Yeah, at Micro Center. Well, I think that does it for the, the basic tools. That's really all you need to do the basic maintenance. And you, again, I don't know how, what the real percentage is, but like at least three quarters of the players I ever dealt with. This, this just the basic maintenance. This question might be a little more advanced, but what about like the turntable height adjustment? I saw in the service manual there's a tool for that. What, um, how yes. do you guys normally check the height? The, the, the easiest way to do that, because you're never going to find that tool, the status height. I mean, you will, don't get me wrong. It's just super hard to find. I have one. I think he's got one. Thing, you I have one. Yeah. Yeah. Did you bring it? Like half the I didn't bring it. Like that. Well, I did. I, that's the synchronizer plate gauge, which is for making sure the F and G turntables are uh, their poles, the underneath yes. are yeah. matched up, and so they can spin it as yeah, at the 450 because it's not the motor doing it. The motor starts it up and helps it. That those magnetic poles that are underneath switch alternating and keep it going. They get it up to speed. Um, so I have a couple of those for some reason, and even in the box from Good, the yeah. factory, if someone has someone, to yes, I got it. Yeah, you, um, I mean, someone will buy those for sure. <laughs> those are I nice to have because I without those, box. it's it's basically guesswork. You have to take the turntable off and you, you push them with your hand. It's in the RCA addendums. John can tell There, there's no tool, no problem. You push the tab with your fingers. You're like, oh. What is going on? Like you're trying to put it, you're like, this is soft metal, I don't like this. <laughs> but you have to do it, and it's the only way. And you put the turntail back on, spin it, and you might hear a scrape, and then you take it back off and push them a little away. It's gonna be guesswork unless you have that synchronizer plate gauge and the feeler gauge, which is actually right here. <laughs> it's really weird. There's it's kind of hard to see from there, obviously, but this one, this part's real thin. This part is a little thicker. But depending on the turntable you have, whether it's the FRG or the 250, 200 versus 100, you have to use a certain side of that gauge and this. And then you can check where the little metal tabs are. And you just push them right there, and as long as it goes right by and clears, you're good to go. That's Put it on. That's for the height. Great. That's for the height? This is, no, this is for the... the the magnetic pole, I forget what they're called. They're synchronized plate gauges, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, right underneath. Um, those are what to get, to, you have to, sorry, with that tool he asked about, the, or you asked about, the half circle. It looks like a turntable, but there's a chunk missing. Oh. That was for that. But, um, 
What was your exact question for the pipe? The oh, the tool, the tool. Um, How do you check it? The easiest way to do it, honestly, because no one ever really has a tool, is you get like a Star Wars disc, you put that in, you, have, you raise it. I usually use books or even two other players, but just enough so you can get underneath <laughs> there. You know what I mean? I thought it was He's got the thing that I want to take a picture of because I'm going to make what he has. He has a little stand made out of wood that's perfect for them. And you can get right underneath and turn it and never have a problem. It's just way easier. Um, but what you do is you get the Star Wars disc, you put it in, you go all the way down as low as you can. Well, as low as you can until you hear a slight bump. like it's not getting, like, and then you, Yeah, and then you do a quarter turn up. Like a quarter turn going up until you don't hear the noise. If you hear it again, you do another quarter turn. Then when you know you don't hear it, you keep playing the Star Wars disc and you play it all the way to at least 55 minutes because the way turntables are, they can change when you get outer, you know, because the way it plays the disc. Mm -hmm. But you turn it, you know, if it needs adjustment, you do it. But at 55 minutes, if it's playing fine, there, it's playing fine at one minute, your height's fine. Yeah. But you could obviously adjust it anyway. If you like, if you get to that 55 and it's not playing right, you adjust it a little, you either not get like less fuzzy or less choppy. Because they do any, weird stuff when it's not the right height. Is that with any disc once it hits 55 minutes? Uh, any disc that is over 55 minutes. You okay. want to use, like, the reason I use Star Wars is because uh, it goes to 60, oh, yeah. 60 I have minutes. I discs that go to 60 minutes. Yeah, yeah. The, the Star Wars, the original Star Wars on CD goes to 60 minutes. So it's a good one to use for testing like that. Yeah. And that's how, that's the prop, like, if you don't have the tool, that's the easiest, most proper way to get the, the correct style type. Right, I was just curious because when I got received my player, the, the, the turntable sunk so low it was hitting the metal rod, yes. and I just adjusted it up like a quarter turn, it, it, it plays all right. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't put too much force. Yeah, um, the, the thing with that too is that, that uh, tool I gave you, the, I'm sorry, I can't the board? Yeah, there you go, <laughs> that tool, you want to take the turntable out and set the turntable shaft to its 15 16 but like even RCA for some reason said 30 30 seconds okay. instead of 15 16 you know what I mean? But you set it to that, and I usually put like a little super glue in there. I can show everyone when we go to do it. Like when you take that nut out where the where the Allen screw is. I no no you lift JK the turntable up and out. I'm talking JK. Yeah yeah you lift the turntable up and out and there's a shaft right. on the table. You adjust that first. To oh, the proper height, and then you put it in there and do the adjusting of the nut. Because the turntable okay. shaft always has to be at 30, 30 seconds, or 15, 16. Okay. So once you get that set, then you can put it in and adjust your height underneath with the wrench and on that adjusting screw and nut. That's how you want to do it. But you can always, if the shaft slips, because it does slip on that table, like I'll get players, and it, they clearly got thrown on the ground. Because the turntable went boom, and then there's this much exposed shaft above and it doesn't play, it won't move it, you know what I mean? So you want to adjust that, then the height underneath. Because that's easy, because otherwise you're just fix, you're not fixing the problem, it's like a little band-aid. If you got the, the correct turntable shaft height, you can go from there. Thank you. Well, Brian, I've had one more thing in my toolkit at home. It's a little stiff cleaning brush. Like the yeah, artist. I don't know why these things collect dust, but they all over the place. <laughs> like, a, like the simple artist paintbrush, the tar. A bit thicker than that, with a fairly stiff bristle. Okay. Yeah, and you'll go, you'll go a long way. You'll find tools that, like, you're like, well, I didn't. It's not there. I didn't need it, but now I know it works perfect for a lot of things. Yeah. See, I got a little one. That's exactly that's probably a better choice. Yes. But yeah. I'm, did everyone see all the basic tools? I just want to make sure I don't miss anything. And again, if you can, I'll leave them up here and set them aside so you can actually see everything you want to take a picture. So you can, you know, oh, gotta get that, gotta get that. But you also have the sheet now too. Huh. This is all, this will work for that. Well, I'll put that on um, work on I'll be covering a lot of that. Shit. Okay, cool. Yes. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for now, other than just doing showing you guys the actual basic maintenance and the other pieces of paper.
they explain what I'm doing, but you'll be able to see it. So yeah, did you want to do your styler? Um, what's the best place to fit in that block diagram thing and talk about uh, parts? Is it now or when we get into the layer? Well, we can do it now. Yeah, it now's fine. Yeah. Uh, the 300 or the 400? Um, let's do both. Can you move that? Oh, you can move it up and yep. down. Yes. Okay. We've got a fair number of these uh, parts available for those that actually do the servicing of the players. We get sp specific orders for, for parts like, over and over again. So there is a trend on what is now failing after the 30 years or so these players have been in the market. You used to see that. Yeah, yeah most people don't yeah. need to see that. It's cool. Um, Lots of uh, problems with sound, like the sound is faked, the sound is not there, one of the chairs, uh, stereo channels is working, the other one isn't. It's usually the um, stereo demod chips are bad. Um, they are not expensive, they're fairly easy to change, they're 16 pin uh, ICs. And if you do put them in, we certainly recommend that you put them in with IC base, because it's not it's all difficult to screw up the, uh, the copper on the press circuit boards. Um, a great thing to do. <laughs> yes. Occasionally, if the picture is not there, the video demon chip, it's a very similar one to the audio one, that should be replaced as well. Uh, for those that you have got the service uh, manual, it tells you uh, what to check when you've done it. There's a frequency that you need to set. Um, a problem we're getting seem to be a lot that the picture stability on the JK player goes is going like this. Like the one I had. Right, like, like you've got, yes. Yeah. It's part of the time-based correction circuit in the player, and there's a coil called an arm stretcher. These often open up and do not allow the stretcher, what it does is to control the back of the stylus and modulate it. So if the disc is going that way, that's what the arm stretcher pushes the sliders in that way. It to correct for um, um, differences in the disc pressing, uh, variations, and things like that. So th this is a, a component that's going wrong quite a lot now. You want me to show the passing around? And this is the one for the JK. It's a little coil on the back. It's this coil right here, connected with these weird wires. But this is, this is the problem of that wobble. Right. Anytime you have that wobble where the screen looks like it's doing that, it's almost every, I've never had it not be this, but it could be something else. You never know with these, but. So you just have to change that whole part out, basically? Um, if you're very good at soldering and you know what to do perfect, <laughs> like John, you can just desolder, put the new one in. I happen to take the green board off and uncoil the two wires and then recoil the new ones back on because it's just easier for me because I've damaged, like, I, I'm good at soldering, but clearly not enough. <laughs> Like I can do a lot of stuff, but like for some reason that when it's too hot, you melt the plastic and it ruins the little coil that's on the post. There's a lot that can go wrong, so I just take the <clears throat> wires and run them off, you know, off the post. There's a little green board you can see that you can unscrew, and there's like five posts, and you just unscrew the two that you need and run the the, tra the coil back to that with the same, not the same wires, but the wires that are attached or that you put on. Um, so I use a temperature controlled soldering iron. It's a it's a it's, it's a box with a it's a special one. That's the only way to take this off. Even, I, that's what I'm yes. saying. Even with me, I use one too. I yeah, still, too. I've, I've damaged two and I was just like, well, it's I'm going to go this way. Yeah. Set it at um, 520 degrees. Something like that. Could we go down a bit? Yes. Okay. A uh, big problem with JK players is that the front panel buttons don't work. And usually because someone's pushed them in so hard, that the detent in the film is stuck in. So the player does weird things, like it will start and then go rushing forward or back, and then it will stop. Lots of things can happen here. Uh, there's no replacement for the, uh, the film mechanism switch. RCA used to have them, and then after that, they started to sell the complete new front panel as a, a unit. Um, what we are doing now is to rebuild the front panel mechanically, putting in tactile switches. Uh, Brian can do it. Yep. We yep. can do it. It's a These very new expensive switches. thing to, to do it, but it's doable. When you put the tactile switches in, it'll never go wrong. <laughs> yeah, oh, they yeah. they work so good. It's yeah. amazing. And you feel, if you, the buttons actually click, you know you won't damage them. 
but it means taking the front panel off, disassembling it completely, saving the switch, the uh, connector part of the old panel. Those are the buttons that replace the old film. Uh, new yeah. switches. You still have the ribbon connector. That still have the ribbon connector, but it's actually used to go into the existing uh, socket. Yeah, you solder directly yeah. to those pins on it, and then yeah, that's another temperature controlled thing where it is. you don't want yeah, to go so over five, that like I, that's one that, I, I'm okay at that one, I can do that one, that one's fine. But like even that's very hard, like because you can see it's like the heat just starts to warp it and melt it. But you can, as long as you keep it on there, you can slip right back into the connector it had, and it works the exact same way. Actually, John, are those video and sound demodulating chips, are those the same for 300, 400? They're the same for all of these RCA made uh, CED players. Is it okay to pass that around? Um, <laughs> yes, you can do that. So they can see what it looks like? Yes. The top six, four, and the next two show you exactly what it does and how you would go about it. Now, the other problem with all the players, the RF modulator has a channel three, four output. As Ryan's already said, you can get a grainy picture. It's quite often because the switch is dirty and then spraying some of your good quality uh, switch cleaner a couple of times to exercise the thing, three, four, three, four, three, four. Good chance that that's gonna clear up. So that's not a replacement part, it's just something you need to do. Okay. Can we have uh, the uh, energy drawing? Yes. Do you have any more questions? If we have one. Yeah. Go back to the other one. 400? Yeah. Brian, on here, which coil are you talking about? It is the one with those ranked wires connected to it. That's the actual arm structure coil. That's what goes bad. Okay. And you can check that with an ohm meter. You want to make sure the player is off and unplugged. But you check that with an ohm meter, and if it's 90 between 120, 90 and 120, it's okay? Yes. Anything between yeah, yes. 90 and 120, you're okay. Anything, Anything different than that, it's the arm structure coil. Right. Uh, the last thing on both the players, sometimes the power supplies go out. First, of course, check the fuse. Good chance you feel it's really okay. You need to do some fault finding on one of these outputs here. Usually it's a 5 volt is out, and you will not see L when you switch the player on, which means load. It's dead, in other words. Yeah. I, 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 I think I've only had one, and I actually I sent it to you. Was, there was more problems than that, but yeah. Well, right. I think I've only seen one, but it does happen quite often, more than you think. Um, player microprocessor control units are extremely reliable. People have ordered them for me, but I know say, they may not fix the, the problem. The problem is the input to the microcontroller. A switch on the mechanical switch might be wrong. Something is open up. So um, unless you're absolutely sure that one of the microprocessors are bad, I wouldn't even change these. Uh, any other qu any questions? Uh, you need to be quite good at uh, unsoldering ICs to, to work on these players. Uh, most most of the electronics are not done this way anymore. They're done in, by a machine that puts yep. them in. Mm -hmm. These, in fact, are replaceable. Yep. And then if you want to try it without, well, you find a broken player and just start messing with that. If you know you're not going to damage anything, it's yes. already done. Yes. But it'll teach you how to like desolder correctly and be able to once you see the solder's gone, you can flick the pin off so that it, you can pull the IC out. It's just what I, I learned how to play like that. It's just the best way. You won't ruin anything. You won't hurt anything. It's already dead. It's the best way to learn. There, there are tutorials on, on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Learn how to go through solder. Don't just start going, ah. But yes, once right, you want to start working on stuff. Do you use the, the, that, the stuff that picks up the... Yes, I normally I use the brake, but there's right. sometimes where I have to use one of those. Like you can tell, it's just not coming off unless I do that. Mm -hmm. did, did you say you brought any ICs with you, John? Or um, no, I didn't. Okay, I got to do that. Okay, you can order them from me. Okay, I'll just send you an email then, because yes. I know I need the RF module here. The front panel replacement, the top six pictures. 
show you what goes on and how they replace that okay. and how you have to rewire everything. One last thing. Um, this is called 1.53 megahertz clock. It's a, a timing signal that goes through all these CED players. If that clock is missing, the, the player seems to work. And sometimes you can get a picture, it's kind of black and white and fuzzy. Uh, certainly if that happens, you need to check to see if that clock signal is present. There's a little coil there that sometimes opens up and, and, the, and the clock signal is, is missing. You will need an oscilloscope to check this. Any questions about the circuit block drawings? They're pretty much the same between all players. Plus the 400 has got some extra ones. This is for the on screen display type deal, right? That's correct. So this is that little uh, board in the front underneath? Yes. Um, do you want to explain on how that is usually the problem and not the. Healthier, like Okay, um, I'm going to disagree with Tom Howe on this. <laughs> He's got a, a, a kit out or an instruction on how to put a cooling fan in this. Uh, no, that's not a problem. It's usually a connector that's oxidized in the player itself it needs to be cleaned. And every time you clean that, it's good for, for a period of years. Yeah. That's been a player in six months ago and I had to take the fan out because it slipped and shorted something out. Mm -hmm. so. It's, it's in, the, like, when I show you the basic maintenance now, yes, okay. on any 400, it's something you do. You won't see it on a 300 or anything lower, so you just forget about it. But on a 400, no matter, it's part of the basic maintenance. And it, it stops that, like, I don't know if you've ever had a 400, you turn it on, and the screen looks, like, wavy or bleeding. Instead, where it says, please load disk, it's all weird and warped. It's the on-screen display, and it's not overheating. There was an addendum put out by RCA, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's Walk the contacts. Do. You just got to clean the contact layer between the plug and the post. And you just work it on there like four times. Every time, I've not had it not work once. As weird as that sound. <laughs> yeah, it's part of the basic routine maintenance mm -hmm. for a 400. You should mm -hmm. do that. It's Even if it's not showing it up, it's, you should do that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I'd make sure. But yeah, it, that's, if you ever see that, it's that. And it's don't put a fan in there. You're ruining things. Didn't come. Right, exactly. Yeah, and it, uh, RCA put an addendum out like they did. the bleeding issue on the OSD on screen display is use contact cleaner on the post and that plug. You'll I'll show you the plug and everything, but yeah, it's I seriously it's worked every time, and people think it's like a game and they're like it ruined because it does really You're like well that doesn't work. <laughs> you don't have to put a fan in. You don't have to do any of that. And the, he's even said probably half the reason that works with the fan. Is because he was he taking take oxidation off <laughs> right. by putting the plug on and off a couple uh, times. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Just one of those things you gotta do. Josh, how are we doing for schedule? Um, I don't know what time is it? It's 12 02. Okay. Yeah, we got pretty much everything done except basic maintenance and looking over service manual data with that. If you want, you also, yeah. All right, we got, we got that. I think yeah. I've gone through everything that we can until we work on players. Other than the, uh, well, do I have the tips? Well, I have the useful servicing tips. Um, I could do my bit on that. So okay. Yes, if you want me to. Yeah, do yeah, that. that's fine, yeah. yeah. And then uh, we'll leave it, break the lunch. There it is, the G-Lend block diagram, sir. All right. Did you want to go through that real quick? No. Okay. It, it's going to be much the same. So no problem. If you can run my uh, absolutely right. Ten easy fixes. <laughs> All right. This way you want to start. Right. Ten easy. Ten problems and ten easy fixes on a, all the players. Players that RCA made. These are fixes you can do. They're all mechanical fixes. You do not have to get into the boards for these extremely common thick problems that occur. On the JK player, this horrible belt here. It's a function <coughs> belt. Uh, it's degraded into black goo. And if you get your fingers on it, you know it. it's extremely difficult to take off. And, terrible. and that's where it's located. It's on the back of the player on the left side. And uh, there's another belt on, but you can see the dirt. 
black dirt that's it's come out right everywhere. Right. Yes. I'm sure we won't try this. I've got it on everything. Somehow I've got it on my socks, all types of stuff. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I swear to you, I'm like sitting there working on it, and then I walk away and I leave a mark on it, like the floor. I'm like, how does that even out? <laughs> this is the fix that RCA recommends in a, in a service company bulletin. Soak everything in household ammonia. Jack Daniels. <laughs> it really does work the best. Yes. The ammonia works the best. The jack after <laughs> oh, don't drink okay. it afterwards. No, okay. But if you leave it there, that for about 15 minutes, this black stuff comes off. And if you've got rubber gloves, I don't yeah. recommend you don't do this. Just wipe the stuff off and use a toothpick to get uh, the black stuff off in the grooves of the pulley. Yeah. I use, I use purple alcohol and Q-tips. Just fine. Yeah, it just takes longer. That's, that's all it is. As well. yeah. Yeah. Ammonia really does. It's the best. Uh, there's, I haven't it's found anything that works, works better. Yeah. It's, I don't like the smell at all, so I just use rubbing alcohol. But it works the best. There's nothing better. Right. Okay. <laughs> this, is a, this is what's called the third reduction year. If you've received a player <laughs> where someone has not put in the yeah, shipping tracks, chances are that the starter's arm has gone back down. Uh, it, 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 it rubs against that gear and it breaks it. It's a cartwheel gear with little um, cart spokes. spokes in there. Yep. That's the um, black one? No, this white this one right here. Right 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 I'm passing right it around. Right. Yep. So if that's a broken one, just I've got so a pick back here. I just, it was an if anybody check wants to pick some up, I brought some with me. Wow. One of them out. One's one's in, that board right there, that's where that, uh, when I was talking about how I unwind the wires off the posts and put the, to put the new arm stretcher coil on, it's that board right there. Again, if you can desolder it without doing that, it saves you a lot of time, you just gotta be good at it. Now, I think you can see what's happened here. The spokes are broken on this one. And this is what it should look like. <laughs> it's, it's a strange design, but yeah. it, it actually twists uh, when the motor starts up, and it breaks with too much force. I had one break uh, because they, like when you take the face plate off, there's that plastic cover that goes over the connector, and you can put it over there, and I didn't put it down all the way when I put the face plate back on, and it was just, up, just enough to stop the stylus iron, and you could hear it click a couple times, and then it broke before I could even catch it or hit power. So yeah, it's one of those things you gotta be careful. I'll show you when I do make. You gotta make sure you either take that thing out and tape the connector down, or put it in right. <laughs> Let's go back to the last picture. Yeah. Is there right. still a supply of those? Yes, <laughs> I got some good ones. These are original RCA. The whole of this gear assembly comes off with one screw here, so it's very easy to slide it out. And there's a little kind of washer that you take off. This is a five-minute job to replace it. And there's no alignment needed. No yep. alignment. It's, it's yes. great. It's great. Yes. So I think RCA designed that to fail. This kind of a mechanical fuse. Is it a tennis That's a good way to put this. Yeah. 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 It's for those sinners that don't put the shipping tabs in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, uh, lots of problems with the back of the machine on the right. This is the function gear. And often the disc won't load properly because you put a warp disc in and it's stopped and it's moan and groan and someone's got, something's, something's going click. It's probably because this transfer rod coupling is broken. I've had that happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Several times. When you do put that back, when you put a new replacement one in, don't turn it on right away. Don't let it, like you think it's going to go right back to where it was. You'll, you could end up breaking it again. Take it, keep it unplugged, but you'll have to use the, the function gear on the left, but you can move that over there and just do it by hand to make yeah. sure everything sets right. And then when you come back over, it sets right. And you, the bar moves the right way. It doesn't block the turn table because you can mess stuff off. up real Power fast. Yeah. Yes. I'm actually yes. able to fix mine and it's held up. No, that's good. No, it's good. I'm just saying it's one of those things where I always check it right. before I turn it back on because right. I one time I, I did it and yeah. it was sat wrong. It just goes, eh. oh. I figured out the same time thing. for another one. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things. Yep. <laughs> um, next picture. I've noticed a lot of time people back there inside that gear. There's a little lever on the spring. Yeah, that's in this picture right here. Oh, is that what you're gonna? Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> this is not caught around the wrong way, but um, I can turn it. 
Um, I think everybody can see what we're doing here. This is the function gear removed from the machine. Right. And if you try, if you try to load a disk, it won't go past the, the door at the start. It's a good chance that the mechanism hasn't opened up to allow the door to open because this cam spring, which hooks up to another mechanism here, is not loose enough to get into the right position. I've had a number of cases mm -hmm. like that. I had when someone put grease or something on it, figured they would move. Right. I had to use contact cleaner and everything to get it. You don't, it, what, it like moves freely in there. You don't want any, it, at the best, maybe DW40, but you, or WD40, you don't want to do anything. You want it to be clean so it can move freely. Like, I suppose I alcohol, stuff. anything that makes a spring. There's this little spring underneath here. Yep. That kind of see it attached here. to that post. Yes. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, if that starts to move, it'll just free spin. It won't latch on to another part that starts opening everything. It's a very weird part. Okay. Next question. Okay. Uh, this is what usually happens when the uh, transfer rod coupling breaks. It should be stuck in this hole here, but it's broken off. Uh, this is the original RCA one. It's another mechanical fuse. <laughs> Actually, if you've got one, a 1 16th inch brass rod, you can repair this. You carefully drill it up and get super glue and put it back. And that's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. It works. The ones that you'll get from me now are, are like that. It's, it's a hard plastic with a brass rod. It's not a mechanical fuse. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, is that well, like the second or third or iteration of that? It's the third one. Okay, yes. yeah. So yes. you've gone through some prototyping for that yes, one. Yes, I've it got a guy some work to get where you are now. Right. Well, I guess my question is, what breaks when that doesn't? Um, what breaks when that doesn't? Mm. I think it only ever breaks because it just becomes weak it, and brittle. It causes us the function mode yeah. to stall eventually because it's trying to, to make the mechanism work. It's, uh, it's just all that force is in one spot. That one little piece right there, it raises and lowers the, the arm, the, the bar that raises and lowers the disc, right. the transfer rod, and it also hits two switches. Right. So yes. really, it's just, that's what that, that, it spins over, hits one switch, and then it knows to do certain things, and then when it's unloaded, it hits the other switch and knows when to stop, and stop doing that. So, I mean, I guess maybe the worst would be a switch or two, uh, that's the other thing. No, but, but it, it would never, because it only break breaks when it's brittle. You know what I mean? Or like. So it was just never intended to last 35 years. I don't think so. <laughs> well, uh, there's a lot of warp disks out now. That's just what usually calls it. Okay. Thing, yeah. You're going to probably find this problem sometime or other. Mm -hmm. I wonder if any of you all that worked at RCA thought ever thought that in 2016 we'd be having the <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I don't, yeah, that's... Keep it Yeah, that there'd, be, yeah, that there'd <laughs> be such a following, you know, that's good. Go to the next, next one. one. Okay. That's what a good, clean stylus looks like. This is a microscope picture. We'll be saying more about that. Uh, I've had some real gems come on recently. <laughs> on all recently. Go to the next picture. See, oh, incidentally, oh, sorry. Oops, oh, go really? back. You, you can see the point here. Okay. Now, people think that the signal is picked up by the diamond stylus tip. Sorry, guy, it's not. There's a metal electrode deposited on the trailing edge of this. This is what pictures, picks up the signal. It's one of the two plates of the capacitor in CED. These can be chipped off, incidentally. Yeah. I've got some other pictures later on. Okay. Is it the uh, the exploded view of that one or? Yes. That? Um, there we go. Yes. It's a slightly different diamond. But this is the keel or the 0.2 micro. This is a metal deposited uh, coating on there. And what sometimes happens when the titus fails is this gets chipped off here. No C. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it needs? Like a full rebuild? Yep, for okay. so. All right, sorry, I just wanted to go figure that one out. So the diamond is just to keep it in the groove? Yeah, it's a groove uh, positioner. It does a good job. John? Just like this, you see the groove follows around the right. <laughs> 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 I, I was told that a few years ago that that diamond stylus was actually one millionth of a carat. <laughs> Have you heard be, that one? Yes, I'm not going to measure that. But oh, <laughs> I had been told that one, uh, for some reason I had been told it was one millionth of a carat. I have to research that. Yeah. 
that's what a, a clean stylus should look like. And your player has a stylus cleaner on it. In most cases, we'll get rid of that and produce that next time you put a disc in. Next question. <laughs> this is what it shouldn't look like. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And that black deposit tells me it's picked up some plastic from the disc surface. Wow. It could be an old disc. Could be one that someone's washed with a detergent, for instance, and that means it's got no uh, lubricant on it. Mm -hmm. So you get a chisel action. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. That uh, stylus didn't play. <laughs> Did it when we cleaned it. Cool. <laughs> Next one? Yes. There's well, another one. It's a hairy one. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad. Yes. Oh. Did that one play when you fixed it or cleaned it? Yes. Yeah. Right, you can do some uh, cleaning yourself. One thing to watch out for, if the player hasn't been used for several years, if there's any deposit on the stylus tip, it's probably hard and the disc and the stylus cleaner won't take it off. So take a look at this, the stylus underneath the, the magnifier. There's a magnifier here, times 10. And you usually can clean off the stylus tip with a fine artist brush and isopropyl alcohol. Works well about sixty yeah. percent of the time. Yep. The other forty percent is when you send it to us at Sedata. We've got some special solvents to do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There. Let's get on to this one. There you go. Yes. I've got some. Uh, we're seeing more and more now because as you know these players do not transport well uh, in a box and what happens is when they drop like this the spindle of the platter loses grips and comes out now if you try and play the player of course several things will happen usually there's a grounding grinding noise when it goes round. so that's this has to be set reset back where it should be that's what I was talking about on how to, you want the shaft to be correct first, and then do the adjustments That's underneath. That's where you use your little, yep. yeah, I've got some more 30, 30 seconds to measure. Yep. And, it, and this turntable does it less, but it's still going to have the problem. Yep. So I had to do that, but I wasn't, didn't, know, didn't know there was a particular set point. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes there, there is. is. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Mine, mine, mine works, though. Miranda. Yep, no, it, it just, it'll work. It's like I said, if you ever take a bump down, or like anything that will bump that table off, it could slide down the shaft again, and then you'll have to readjust again. So like, it's just a Band-Aid instead of like the permanent fix. Are you gonna say anything about uh, shipping? Yes, like, yes. And how old will they, have, will they have to be protected for, for this? Yeah, um, I mean, for me, I always buy a brand new box from Home Depot for two bucks, the extra large one, and I have a, a it's like a perforator, so I can make it the size I want. Like, t I just do 10 inches high. Yeah. And then they, they fold over perfectly after you cut the tops off already. So it just works out good for almost all the players. But I do like two rows of uh, bubble wrap around it both ways. And then I actually I go buy packing peanuts. Like I make sure that it's not going to be messed up. And I put all around, I put a layer in and I put it all around it and then I put it on top. And it's got, you know, a good amount all around the player. On every two, part. two layers this way and two layers and the other this way. way. Yeah. If you put three, yeah. it's not going to hurt it. It won't hurt it for sure. It'll just right. make it harder to pack like with yeah. that. Yeah. You might have to get a bigger box. Yeah. But I, and, and obviously any shipping tab or anything like that. Um, Putting something in there to hold that turntable in too, like you said, a piece of cardboard or something. Uh, well, like that's for the Hitachi ones. The top there too, the that, he, that, yes, there's a, there's a piece of styrofoam that you can put underneath a bar, which I'll show you. I don't have the piece of styrofoam here, but I should have brought that. But you can put it in there so it stops the turntable from moving. And the arm kind of locks with the front anyways, like they have the, the transport screws. Right, cause I bought my SJT 200 back in like 2003, and mm -hmm. it had the guy sent it double box in the original RCA yeah. box and everything with mm -hmm. the original shipping tabs and everything. Yeah. In it. And that turntable, it's still. Oh yeah, no, the turntable pop up. There's a like I said, John. I don't, they never had it in initial packaging or shipping, did they? Yeah, it's his idea or something, but it works perfect. You take a block of styrofoam. There's that bar that goes across. It's a, a gray bar that's like 
a, a 90. Gotcha. It fits right underneath there, and it stops okay. the turntable from moving anywhere. I won't ship without that either. Um, on the FG <coughs> players, you can uh, you take the the stylus cover off, and there's you can see a gap. Here's the stylus iron. You know, there's the, the whole window. You put a piece of uh, styrofoam in there too, and it stops the stylus iron from moving at all. So that's the other way to do that on the FG players. Um, I've never really had a problem as long as I do it that way every time. I have had one go bad, but I don't, I'm pretty sure it was because UPS was just going over fences kind of thing. Right. You know what I mean? Anything regular it can take. Um, yeah, I, again, every player I've ever shipped, and I mean, I've probably gotten to at least 50 at this point now, through everything through eBay, everything through people I know. I've only had one, and that even after they get home, you know, I've only had one person break the transport or uh, the third reduction gear. They took the screws out, took the little tabs I had on that said, please remove before you turn on, and then they put the screws back in and turned it on. Oh. Great. <laughs> yes. uh, so after that, I started to tape them to that because I would I'd punch a hole through it and screw through it, you know what I mean? I just start taping them to it so you know that it's all together, and I never had a problem since then. But again, that's one thing you don't underestimate people. Ship it as good as you can because someone will find a way to mess it up. I promise you, they will. Like I said, they took the screws out, put them back in. They took the pieces of paper off and said, leave them in. I imagine a lot of that with that shaft is it's just because of the age of the players. Like yes, the, they imagine sense. originally that that was an injection molded around that spindle. Would you know that was? was no, there's another factor. You've got to think back 35 years in 1980. When RCA made these players in Bloomington, Indiana, 60 miles south of here, they all went out to an RCA dealer for distribution. On a pallet, they went in a, in a large truck which had an air, air floating bed on it. These right. players were not designed to be shipped by common carrier. Gotcha. FedEx didn't exist, UPS may have, it was just a US parcel service. The drop test and other uh, qualifications for the boxes and things were not made to that kind of standard. So we're shipping everything these days. Yeah, yeah. And and, and you it's up against technology. Um, is is it the memories video disc that has the <coughs> players for the test to yeah, see how far it can stand that. dropping? Right. I, I think, think so. It, yes. They have like a little it machine that lifts it up and just go boom, boom, boom drop yes, them. Yeah. That's right. Okay. And it was designed for uh, going to the distributor. Yeah, yeah, yeah they were just testing the threshold. It wasn't what designed did. to have it this way, that way, and everything else. Yep. When I was shipping players for the shipping tabs, I would just use nails, and they were just real skinny nails, and I'd use tape, and, just tape them up. and then that way when they and yeah. had a big instruction yep. thing on the top, and then like pop and they just fall yeah. out, so that... Yeah, as long as it keeps well, it from moving, yeah. that's all you need. I mean, yeah, probably you could use Q-tips, you know what I mean? If you cut the one end off and they're, they're good enough, they stay, yeah. I wouldn't do it, but just, I mean, it's yeah. just one of those things. I use cheap nails, but still, yeah, yeah. something hardy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Next to the picture. Just to show you that it can happen on the FG player turntable too. I've had that happen once. Yeah. But it definitely happens. Oh, incidentally, if you're going to do the height adjustment, there's a, a long, thin hex wrench that goes down through the middle. <laughs> that one, the 8-inch yeah. one. Some, about three inches lower, it'll find a contact point. <laughs> mm. Okay, that's this one. And that's, what, that's the alignment for this when you glue this back is exactly flat so uh, with the plate the flat it's flush. Yes. Yeah, there's no uh, adjustment measurement to the mm -hmm. okay. Right. Um, I'm, since we've got one of these, I found it's exactly 24 millimeters from there to there is where you set a JK platter once you have to to get the, the uh, thing set. I'm not sure where the JK went. But that's the dimension, yeah. <coughs> it probably translates to what you said. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I think your your website at one point had uh, RCA, like the snippet of RCA saying it was 15 sixteenths. I think that's correct. And they, they yeah, for some reason, again, they said 30, 30 seconds, like they just didn't want to produce it. <laughs> so, 20, that's 24 millimeters? Probably yes. equal to And you've got the rule that you can do that now. Yep. Um, super glue works fine. Really yep. does small little bit in there like I have a kit sometimes I'll put it on each side and you kind of like blow it into the ring in there and then I have to uh, what I normally do to dry it quickly is I put it in front of a fan 
<laughs> That's the only way that I've gotten it to dry in like five minutes. Otherwise, you guys sit there for like a half hour right. doing that. I went a little further than that. I heated it up with a soldering gun. And, and it works, it works. Back eh? in and it held in place. So. Um, what else <laughs> was there with this? Uh, the, the little, you have to make sure washer at the bottom. Me. No, if you put super glue on, you have to make sure it's all carefully wiped. Yes. Take it off when it's set. Wipe it off Otherwise, when it sets. Yes. I take a razor blade and very carefully yes. all along the side of it to get it off, and then you can just either scrape it off or pull it away. You know what I mean? <coughs> But yeah, you want that shaft spotless, basically. Otherwise, I've had it where it wasn't, and you can you see it like spins and it goes. Yeah, <laughs> like it's like super glue. Yep. Okay, next one. I what it is. Oh, um, um, this is just a, to show you can take the turntable out of the FG machines. Often the, the picture is shaky. Often if it goes from black and white to color, it, all it needs is a basic service, clean and lube of the the spindle shaft. Very rarely will you ever have to replace the turntable bell. And for the reason you said, the turntable bell gets up the turntable up to approximately the right speed, and then the, the magnet and the coupling on the motor takes over from there. Ooh, so the final. Um, Do you want, can I want to show them yeah. that, that uh, actual right there? Right. Sorry, it was. Uh, the final speed is not determined by the belt at all determined by the magnetic coupling. Right there. Yes, exactly that. Right. Yes. This is what he's talking about right here. These two bars. Mm -hmm. It's a two, two speed, speed gearbox. <laughs> yeah. Now, we've had problems with these magnetic poles so I've lost their strength. If that happens, there's no other way other than to replace the turntable. None of the adjustments will take care of it. Probably uh, what you're dealing with when you couldn't get that to work after doing everything. So now that, then why did they? I guess what was the difference between designing it that way versus the JK players? Like they, like, I mean, because I didn't even realize the FGs were direct drive. So that belt just gets it up to speed, yes. and then the magnets take over. That's correct. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't even understand that's how the technology is happening. Well, yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think they the wanted a cheap, uh, exactly. more advanced player, so they went to a digital, a uh, crystal-controlled uh, oscillator that drove the turn. I think the JK ones. Yes. This yeah. was also limited. It spun relative to 60 hertz, so probably as soon as they wanted to go international, then they, they had a problem yeah, there. So they by the electronically order. switch it. Right. Yeah. So interestingly, the engineering three-player, I didn't realize what you were just saying about the drive with the belt is just yeah, up to speed, that makes sense. The engineering player had the same design, so when I was looking at it, I, it wasn't obvious to me why there was mm -hmm. another series of magnets mm -hmm. and whatever else, but that totally makes sense now. Mm -hmm. yeah, Ryan will show you later how this goes, but what, in order to get to the turntable, uh, fold back this module, the power module that sits on the top, take this, uh, plate off one screw. Here's the, the problem here. Mm -hmm. The two uh, yoke screws. And if you don't use a well-pointed Phillips screwdriver, they might actually uh, burr over and you have to drill them out. Yeah, It's one of the worst it, parts of the that. Turn they turn yes. I've had to drill one out before and I didn't get a screw from you. It was when I, I heard it a long time ago. But I think I had one screw saved and then I see it through the other side. <laughs> and it works. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I want to go over today and maybe some other people, and I've got player my 250 which is having a problem but when you take this a 250 apart or any F and G series player apart to service it and put it back together getting that the stylus tracking arm back in mm -hmm. position properly so that it'll play to the end of the disc that's one of the biggest things I have problems mm -hmm. with had knowing where to how to align that and to get that we need to go over yeah that yeah position. I don't have a picture for the that. black oh you got a picture you beautiful yeah, yeah. there's a black here the totally part of the thing in the back right that's all right yeah Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> the polar. <laughs> the problem that we've seen a lot of recently is player work seems to be fine, but all of a sudden the gun goes What What is happening here is this is a quarter arm stretcher coil. It's part of the time base correction system that corrects errors and things from the disc. And there's a little plunger here that fits magnetically to the back of the stylus. It, it mates with it and it pushes the stylus this way and that. It's very, very clever the way it does it. But occasionally, with the magnet on this uh, 
arm stretcher falls out and it gets stuck on the end of the stylus and that usually causes a problem. Could you have the next picture? Yeah. There is the magnet. This is happening over and over again. There's the back of the regular <laughs> stylus, and this here's the one that seemed to have picked up the magnet from this uh, okay. yeah. arm stretcher. You can tell whenever that problem happens because it sticks there every time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, there's one problem. Yeah. Yeah. There's a cheap, easy, just glue the magnet back again. Oh. I think it must be time related to why you got, you the 30, 50 years of play, it's beginning to fall off, but that's it. I have replacement for the complete arm stretcher, but not the magnets. If you lose it, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Next picture. Yes. Oh, yes. You've got an FG player that works. You're using it on channel 3, 4, but the picture is grainy. Uh, and it doesn't look that good. Good chances are that it's the switch here. Exercise it backwards and forwards and put some of your Switch yep. <coughs> in the yep. hole. There's it's yes. same. Sometimes I fix the player, it worked fine, and all of yes. a sudden it's grainy. I'm like, what? I, I just sold this. I have to do what? No way. This is terrible. And then I ask him, and then I do that, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh. Yeah. Simple effects. Saves everything. If you think it's the problem, it still doesn't do it. You're going to have to take the, the board out of the uh, player and unsolder the, the metal shield on it and put some direct movement yeah. on it. Yeah. That's a more difficult job. You said too there could also be a weak solder joint on one of those. Yes, it can be that. Yeah. Too. That could be a problem too. If like that doesn't fix it, the contact player all even taking that off, it could be a weak solder joint. I've had the RCA plugs, they, they go in like the same way. It comes in just metal bends right to the board and they solder in. The way people take them off. They put instead of pulling it straight out, they like bend it, they pull down or pull up. That eventually weakens that solder joint, and then it just starts to move in there. And that way, when you push it in some certain way, you'll get picture, and you're like, "Oh, it works." Then you go to move it again, and it just moves that metal bar on the board, and it's gone. So you just literally just resolder it, and it works perfect. Again, something that looks like a major problem, like, "Oh no, what do I do?" Just check it real fast. It was a solder joint. Next one. I think that's the last one. Yeah, that's oh, the 250. You've got a G250 and it won't accept the disc. Almost 100% uh, chance that this belt has, has um, is either gotten slack or it's just degraded. I tend to, these ones tend to not go to goo. I notice that they, right. they get yes, super they get stretched out. Yes, they do. And they look yes. just like, well, you can tell they're old and like dried out, but like not anything like the JK belts. Those things just turn to mush. Um, for people who have asked me, well, how do I get the belt off because it's covered by this black multi tooth gear? Next picture. Mm -hmm. You just put Great. a screwdriver on the bottom and go, yeah. mm -hmm. pops out. Mm -hmm. It's a friction fit. Yep. yep. If you have uh, like really thin needle nose pliers, I've noticed that works real good too because it gets on both sides. You don't have to worry about like, because you, you do the screwdriver, you kind of want to use the other side. You can feel like, ah, I'm doing this right. The needle nose pliers go right and you just go, it pops right off. But you gotta have thin ones. If you have regular size ones, it's not gonna work. That's why the screwdriver is usually the go to. <laughs> okay. That's it, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Thank you very much. If anybody wants to see the arm stretcher, a coil, and a magnet, I've got one right here. <laughs> cool. So I'm curious, you're saying you've been seeing an increase in orders for certain parts and yes. such. I mean, who is ordering this stuff? I mean, is it the few random TV repair shops left in the country? Is it him? Is it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly people like the people in this room are ordering yep. right, because of, they go to the Sedatum website. Yep. And and yes, yeah, some TV service people uh, are, are uh, doing it as yeah. well. Uh, we managed to get most of your parts in the RC we had in Deptford. No, it's nothing from Japan. I'm sorry. It's great that you have it, and I know occasionally I've stopped in some TV shops, and you know there are very few left. Um, but usually they've been like, oh yeah, you know, go, go in our basement, whatever you find, well, you know. Uh, yeah, it sounds like a field day. Yeah, those places are not really parodies anymore. I mean, there'd be like. I did this place in the middle of nowhere, Ohio. I was on my trip back home. He sent me 
I think I got a stylus, a couple of belts out of them. There's some belts I'm going to have you look at. I see your boxes, boxes too. I don't even know what it feels to you. We should all be very grateful of John, by the way, for uh, for everything. For everything. Yeah. 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 I mean, seriously, yeah. everything. We all yeah. He did things that they, they uh, the RC, all uh, people at RC said so you we could never do. Like the stylus rebuilds, yeah. get new tips, new fly leads. Yeah, tell us. Without John, they the laughed at him. He's like, we'll help you, but get out of here. So. Well, tell us about the stylus rebuilds. Uh, do you want to know the story behind the stylus? Well, I, mean, I, I, I mentioned. How work with the, the two people or the, the, the guy's daughter. And I mentioned about my father that we were doing this, and he was. He didn't know the exact details, but he was thinking, that was a lot of specialized, he didn't understand how someone could be doing this in their garage, right? Well, we don't, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, about 10 years ago, it came obvious to me that the, the stylus supply is beginning to dry up, so what can we do to, uh, can they be repaired? So I talked to a couple of uh, RC people that did the stylus work, I know them, they said, well, probably it can't be done, and some of them offered me a few parts. But um, well, it's still at Thompson, uh, one of the managers, uh, her daughter was at uh, University in Terre Haute, and he said, do you know anything that uh, Amanda can do for a, a, a project? She's got a summer paper to write. I said, well, it's not quite exactly what we do in our department. I've got something I certainly could do. So she worked out all the details and the mechanical details for her paper on, on the way that this would, uh, how we could rebuild styluses and the jigs and fixtures and things like that. Wow. Now, she's patented some of these things now, so I can't tell you too much, but wow. Amanda did that work. Yeah, that much work went into that. That's why I said we get, anything we basically have, we got to thank him and his team. Like, there's no yeah, way around there's it. There's another guy in, that would be in, nothing. in the wow. Bloomington, and when. I get to, I'm retired, so I probably do most of the work. They, they can help me too, but uh, we can make the fly leads. They're made of a copper alloy. And incidentally, you'll love this. Remember when we used to have clockwork watches? It's watch spring material that the flies mm -hmm. they, they get laser cut now to shape. Sure, sure. That's laser cut? Yep. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yep. So, I mean, if John ever decides to quit doing this, there may be still hopefully other people that will. I think we can pass that on. Yes. Yeah. You're not going to retire for at least 20 yeah. years. <laughs> the, the, the problem. The problem is going to be the uh, diamond tips. Uh, we're still working off some diamond tips we got from the manufacturers. A surplus supply when Thompson went dead, but uh, they told me the price will be quite expensive. We have to reorder because they have to be coated with this metal plate on them. It's very so, expensive. So the diamond tips isn't the biggest issue on rebuilding the cartridge? Um, it's one of the things we have to do. It's it going to be the issue in the future on whether oh. we can afford to build them. Oh. Yeah. Um, we'll say more about styluses uh, probably after lunch. I've got some things to say about it. Okay. So you still got that one? Do you want to do that after? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good to me.